political course in the country has been volatile and fast-changing to say the least. And despite all the accords and agreements, CPNUML now finds itself in a helpless position as Nepali Congress has taken the center stage, albeit from the back door. As Nepali Congress candidate Ram Chandra Podal is almost certain to become the country's third head of the state, CPNUML has quit the government and withdrawn its support. Good evening, I am Praram Badhal. Let's begin with the main stories. CPNUML quits the government and withdraws its support following the blocking of Foreign Minister's Geneva visit. Rashtriya Swatantra Party to maintain support but undecided on presidential election. Hindu festival of Holi begins with the installation of a ceremonial bamboo pole known as Jir in the capital's Vasantapur. Main day to be marked on Monday next week in Hilly region and a day later in Tarai. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un kicks off a meeting of ruling workers' party to discuss improving the country's economy and agriculture as fears of food shortages and humanitarian crisis grow. And Team Nepal taking on Papua New Guinea at the ICC World Cricket League 2 match underway in the UAE, chasing a target of 204 runs for a win. Members of CPNAML who had joined the government have furnished their resignation to Prime Minister Pushak Maldahal. All eight UML members reached the official residence of the Prime Minister in Balwatar and tendered their resignation today. Prior to this, today's meeting of UML Secretariat had decided to quit the government and withdraw its support as well. CPN UML has decided to quit the government after the formation of a new coalition involving eight parties, including Nepali Congress, for the presidential election. Speaking after the party's meeting, UML Deputy Chair Bishnu Podal said that the party had made efforts to sustain the support extended to the government even after a lack of consensus for the presidential election, but added that the party decided to withdraw the support after Prime Minister Dahal decided to proceed in a new manner. Prime Minister Dahal had blocked the Geneva visit of Bimala Rai Podal, who was heading the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. As per the decision of the Council of Ministers, a team led by Bimala Rai Podel was scheduled to leave for Geneva to participate in the 52nd session of the Human Rights Council's meeting. However, the visit was blocked following the directive from the Premier himself, who had asked her to either quit the government or to remain as a minister without portfolio. Now, Bimala Rai Podel, who was serving in capacity of the Minister for Foreign Affairs, has said that legal questions have surfaced with advisors leading the delegation at the UN Assembly, which should have been headed by the Prime Minister himself. She has added that such moves could hurt the national prestige. Addressing the session of the National Assembly regarding not being allowed to attend the 52nd Assembly of the UN Human Rights Council, Podial said that such incidents could have a negative impact on Nepal's achievements regarding human rights. She added that despite Nepal's progress regarding human rights, questions were surfacing regarding transitional justice and expressed concerns regarding the downgrading of the Human Rights Commission from A to B. Rashtriya Swatantra Party has decided not to withdraw the support it had extended to the government at the moment. The Central Committee meeting of the party held today has decided to retain the support it had extended to the government. However, the party is yet to reach a decision on whom to support during the presidential election. Prior to this, Rashtriya Prasatantra Party and CPNUML have already withdrawn their support to the government. CPN Unified Socialist Chairperson Madhav Kumar Nepal has said that the eight political parties have come together to protect democracy, republicanism and the constitution of Nepal. Former Prime Minister and CPN Unified Socialist Chairperson Madhav Kumar Nepal has said that his party will support Nepali Congress presidential candidate Ram Sandra Podel. Speaking with journalists at the Surkhet airport today, Nepal said the common candidate of the eight parties, Podel, would be elected as the third president of the country. Leader Nepal had reached Surkhet with another party leader, Ghanasham Busal, for the training of the party members and carers. No complaints have been filed against the two candidates for the presidential election. Now, based on the schedule of the election commission, investigations were to be held today if any grievances had been filed on the candidates. Eight political parties have fielded senior Nepali Congress member Ram Chandra Podal as their common candidate for the presidential election slated for the 9th of March against Suhas Chandra Nimbang from CPNUML. The election commission will publish the final list of candidates tomorrow. The Hindu festival of Holi has begun from today with the installation of a ceremonial bamboo pole known as Cheer in the capital's Basantapur. 
The three-tiered bamboo pole, fringed with colorful strips of clothes, has been erected in the south of Gatti Boitak in Hanuman Darbar. The Manandar community erected the chair at the auspicious timing of 7.45 a.m. early this morning. After hoisting the colorful chair, the members of the community put vermilion powder on each other to mark the commencement of the festival across the country. The main celebration of the festival in the hilly regions this year will be on Monday next week and the Tarai region will celebrate Holi a day later on Tuesday. The government announces public holiday on the occasion of the festival. Magar Day has been observed in several districts today. Members of the Magar community have celebrated the Magar Day by dancing and holding rallies in Bankes, Kohalpur and Khazura. Meanwhile, the Magar community has also marked the 41st Magar Day with cultural performances and attires in Tanahu. The Nepal Magar Association Tanahu organized a program where the members of the local Magar communities had come together to mark the occasion. Actor Purna Bikram Shah, also known as Paul Shah, has been released from Tanahu prison today after the Pokhara High Court acquitted him of child sex abuse charges. A joint bench of acting chief judge Dili Razacharya and judge Sridhar Kumari Padasaini issued the verdict, citing a lack of evidence to establish the charge against Shah, according to Bishnu Prasad Acharya, information officer at the High Court. Shah had moved the High Court challenging the September 6, 2022 verdict of the Nawal Parasi East District Court, which had sentenced the actor to two years and six months in jail and slapped a fine of 25,000 rupees on the charge of molesting a minor. The district court, however, had said the rape charge against him could not be established. With this order, Shah, who was serving time in Tanau prison, had been released. Earlier, the Tanau district court on 17th of January had acquitted the actor who was on trial on the charge of raping a minor in a separate case filed against him in Tanau. Shah had been under judicial custody in Tanau prison, awaiting a final verdict from the court. A 17-year-old singer had filed complaints in February last year, alleging Shah of raping her in Tanahu and Nol Parasi East Districts. The 32-year-old actor was taken into custody at the district police office in Tanahu on February 27, 2022, after the girl filed the complaint. The victim also filed another case against Shah at the area police office in Goinda Court, Nol Parasi. In March 2022, the Tanahu District Court had issued an order to send Saf to judicial custody for investigation. The singer, a minor as per Nepal's law, has accused Shah of raping her with a false promise of marriage. She filed the case in Tanahu days after the controversy arose, with reports surfacing on various online news outlets. However, the singer later changed her statement. She told the Tanahu District Court in April last year that she had not been raped and the information stated in her previous complaints were false. Now, Kabul Vastu police have arrested a person with the possession of 16 kilograms of hashes. The police took Megras Gharti of Shivaraz municipality into custody for the possession of the illegal substance. Spokesperson for the district police office, Kapil Vastu, DSP Min Bahadur Ghale, informed that Gharti was arrested carrying the hashes in a plastic bag, which was being planned to be taken to India. It has been over a year and a half that upgrading works of Muglin Pokhara Road section of the Prithvi Highway had started. However, due to lack of safety precaution taken by the contractor company, passengers during the journey have been facing the brunt. The upgrading works of Abu Khairini in Tanahu to Jamune, a section of 41 km, and from Jamune to Pokhara's Prithvi Chok spanning 45 km, is being carried out at an investment of 13.62 billion rupees. The contractor company had earlier pledged of minimizing hassles for the passengers while the upgrading works continued on the highway. However, as the company has failed to abide by the agreement, the commuters are having to bear with excessive dust and potholes. The vehicles flying on the route also need to halt for considerably long periods of time. There are also increasing threats of accidents due to rising dust particles. The contractor company has been assigned the project with a deadline of August 2024, while only 15% of the works has been completed so far. The so placed works mean that the project is bound to miss the deadline, prolonging the, prolonging the problems for the commuters. The normal two hour drive from Abu Khairini to Prithvi Chok in Pokhara is currently taking five hours, incre increasing public frustration along with chances of accidents. Even as the contractor company is giving various lame excuses, including COVID pandemic, there is a call on the monitoring authority to put pressure on the contractor company to complete the project on time. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. 
Why has the state-owned medicine company not been able to operate on full capacity? Your options are A. Poor management, B. Political interference, and C. Lack of resources. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for the international news. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un kicked off a meeting of ruling Workers' Party of Korea officials to discuss improving the country's economy and agriculture sector as fears of food shortages and a humanitarian crisis grow. International experts say food insecurity has worsened in the isolated nation amid COVID-19 lockdowns and strict international sanctions over North Korea's nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs. The ongoing Workers' Party of Korea meeting first held on Sunday approved agenda items. The North Korean food situation appears to have deteriorated, South Korea said this month, while the U.S.-based 38 North program, which monitors North Korea, said last month in a report that food availability has likely fallen below the bare minimum with regard to human needs, with food insecurity at its worst since the famines of the 1990s. Israeli settlers attacked Palestinian homes late on Sunday in Hawara near the occupied West Bank city of Nablus after a Palestinian gunman killed two Israeli brothers as they were driving. One Palestinian was killed during attacks by the settlers on houses and cars, according to Palestinian officials. Video showed settlers blocking a street in Hawara, lighting fires and throwing stones toward Palestinian homes. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the shooting of the Israeli brothers, which came as Israeli and Palestinian officials met in Jordan to discuss ways of lowering tensions. Israel's military said the gunman came to a junction and opened fire towards an Israeli vehicle. It said the casualties near Hawara, an area that sees regular friction between Palestinians and settlers, were brothers from Har Braka, a settlement eight kilometers away. One was a shoulder in a program of Jews seminary students. Ghassan Douglas, an official in charge of anti-settlement activities, said several Palestinian houses and 15 cars had been set on fire after the attack. A White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has said that China has not moved toward providing lethal aid that would help Russia in its invasion of Ukraine. However, Sullivan said Beijing has not taken that option off the table. He further added that U.S. officials are sending the message that providing such aid would be a real mistake. The United States and its NATO allies in recent days have been scrambling to dissuade China from such a move, making public comments on their behalf that China is considering providing lethal equipment to Russia. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said China has been providing non-lethal assistance to Russia through its companies. Republican Representative Michael McCall, chair of the House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee, cited reports that drones are among the lethal weapons China has considered sending to Russia. U.S. President Joe Biden visited Kiev and met with President Volodymyr Zelensky last Monday, promising new American military aid for Ukraine worth $500 million. A billionaire Elon Musk accused the media of being racist against whites and Asians after U.S. newspapers dropped a white comic strip author who made derogatory comments about black Americans. The LA Times, The Washington Post and USA Today were among newspapers that canceled the cartoon Dilbert after its creator Scott Adams said Americans of color were a hate group and posted racist comments on his YouTube channel on Wednesday. In replies to tweets about the controversy, the Tesla and Twitter chief executive said the media had long been racist against non-white people but are now racist against whites and Asians. In response to an account that said white victims of police violence get a fraction of media coverage compared to black victims, Musk said the coverage is very disproportionate to promote a false narrative. Musk did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Musk's views on social issues have been increasingly under the microscope since he took over Twitter in October. He has sparred with civil rights groups over Twitter's level of protection against hateful content and the reinstatement of some accounts that previously had been suspended. Some advertisers, advertisers, in fact, have left the platform over concerns about brand safety and Twitter has rolled out some new controls for ad placement. It is now time for the sports news. Sports news. Nepal are chasing a victory target of 204 runs in the ICC World Cricket League 2 match. 
against Papua New Guinea, currently being held in the United Arab Emirates. In the match underway at the Dubai International Cricket Stadium, PNG were put to bat and posted 203 runs for the loss of nine wickets in the 50 overs. Skipper Asad Vala and continue. Chad Soper, who remained not out, were the leading run scorers for PNG. Sese Bao also added 31 runs, while Norman Vanua chipped in 25. Gulsan Chah was the pick of the Nepali bowlers, grabbing three wickets. Kushal Malla also took two wickets, while Sumbal Kami, Karan Kesi, and Patish GC all claimed a wicket each. Chasing a victory target of 204 runs, Nepal are inching towards victory, having scored 189 runs for the loss of five wickets in 40 overs, according to the recent update. Opener, opening pair, in fact, of Kushal Vurtel and Asif Sekh gave a good start for Nepal with an opening partnership of 76 runs. Vurtel was out after scoring 56 runs, while Sekh was run out, scoring 44. Skipper Rohit Podil scored 20 runs, and Ganendra Malla, the former captain, managed to score only four runs. The Sadabato Youth Club have progressed to the grand finale of the KPO League Cup after securing a sudden death win over Thruvan Army. Second half of the first semi-final between Sadabato and Thruvan Army was played earlier today after the match was affected because of heavy rainfall, hailstorm and adverse weather condition yesterday. The match was pushed to sudden death after no team scored in the regulation time and the penalties also ended in a stalemate. Suraj Gurung and Pasang Lama scored for Sadabato in the sudden death, while Deepak Gurung scored for Army, but Sunil Rai's effort was saved by Sadabato custodian Avisek. Meanwhile, organizers of the tournament, KPOLI FC, have crashed out from the semi finals. Following a 1 0 defeat to Machindra FC, we will now take on Sadabato in the grand finale, slated for the 1st of March at the Dashrath Stadium. The Supreme Court has stayed the decision of the Patan High Court of releasing the rape alleged cricketer Sandeep Lamichane on a bail amount of 2 million rupees and has also accepted Sandeep's application seeking approval to travel to the United Arab Emirates for the ICC World Cricket League 2 tournament which is underway. The joint bench of Sapna Malla Pradhan and Kumar Tudal issued the approval to Sandeep's application today. Sandeep was alleged of raping a minor. Earlier, the Office of the Attorney General had moved the Apex Court against the decision of the High Court of releasing the rape alleged cricketer on a bail amount of 2 million rupees. Lamitani was included in the national team after his suspension was lifted following his release. He then played for Nepal against Scotland and Namibia in the home series of the World Cricket League 2 tournament. The UAE leg of the tournament has begun from today. Nepal is playing against Papua New Guinea and the hosts UAE in it. That is all for the moment. Our next English bulletin is at 10.30 p.m. Thank you for staying with us. Goodbye for now.